Okay, let's start doing some applications. Let's do an application from differential geometry. Really, geometry for now, but soon our geometry will become differential geometry. Let's construct the equation of a straight line. More specifically, what's the equation of a straight line that passes through the tips of two given vectors? So you have a vector A and B, and their tips uniquely define a straight line. What is its equation? Let's find an algebraic expression that would capture this line. So whenever you're describing a curve, you need a parameter. That parameter will be alpha. So you need to find a mathematical expression that involves these two vectors and the parameter alpha. And remember, all we're allowed to do is multiply vectors by numbers and add them together. So let's find the combination that would represent, in some sense, this straight line using the parameter alpha. So it'll be like this. Okay, that's our first question. So the suggestion was B minus A times alpha. Well, let me draw B minus A, because all, all you have to do is connect the tips, and that's A minus B. The only, th when you connect the tips, the only question that remains is whether it's A minus B or B minus A. A minus B. You said B minus A, I'm gonna use A minus B. A minus B, and then I'll pre-multiply by alpha, that's just because what I prefer. So let's see, let's take alpha equals two. When we have alpha equals two, this becomes twice A minus B, so it's twice this vector. Okay, but if I had to be sort of systematic in any kind of way, I would have to say that two times A minus B is this vector right here. Because we do actually have the convention that all of our geometric vectors are coming from the same point. And we chose that to be that arbitrary point. So if I had to pick one, it would be this guy. So that actually describes this point, which is not quite on the line. So what we want is vectors whose tips fall on that line. So throughout this subject, when we say describe something with an expression, what we're looking for is a family of vectors whose tails all come from the same point and whose tips trace out that object. That's what we're looking for. So this is obviously an important component of the answer, but it's not the final answer. So Alex, what adjustment do we need to make to that expression to actually make it this line? Add A, that's right, add A. So go here, and then from here use this expression. What this expression does for you is it helps you travel along the direction of this line, right? The beauty of A minus B is that it points along this line. That's why it was such a crucial part of the answer, the most crucial part of the answer is to capture the direction of this line. And A minus B does it. A minus B points in the direction of the straight line. And alpha, multiplying that vector, helps you travel left and right along that line. Positive alpha takes you in this direction, negative alpha takes you in this direction. Now it's just a matter of deciding where to start. And you need to start somewhere on the line. So you can either add A to it, or you can add B to it, or in fact, you can add any vector that's on the line. So what did you say, A? I'm good with A. So it's A plus alpha times A minus B. And please note that it makes total sense, because when alpha is zero, you're at A, so you're right here. 
When alpha is 1, you have to add to A, A minus B, so you'll end up here. Then alpha equals 2 puts you here, alpha equals 3 puts you here, alpha equals minus 1 puts you right at B. And you can see that, plug in minus 1, and you algebraically get A's cancel, you get B. A equals minus 2 will put you here, and so forth. So alpha equals 0 is right here. So there is my question, and your answer had arbitrariness in it. Right? You knew you had to use the parameter alpha, but which point corresponds to alpha equals 0 is totally up to you. Which direction corresponds to growing alpha is totally up to you. And how fast you move along this line is totally up to you. So this is just one way to capture it, and it's a pretty good one. Let me rewrite this in a slightly different way. What I don't like about this way is that it treats A and B unequally. But I think if I were to multiply this out, uh, there would be a little bit of a parity restored between A and B, and then we'll be able to make one more observation. So when I multiply this out, what I get is, This is a little bit more, there's a little bit more parity between A and B here because they're both in a linear combination, they just have different coefficients. A has the coefficient 1 plus alpha, and B has the coefficient minus alpha. So it's maybe, it's not a better way of writing it, it's just a different way of writing it. The advantage of this is that it's very geometric. It says get to the straight line by going to the tip of A, and then start traveling along the straight line by using A minus B multiplied by alpha. And then this, if I had written it in this way, you would actually not know right away what this represents, right? You'd have to say, all right, let me plug in alpha equals one, oh gee, I'm at A, or something. Alpha equals zero, I'm at A, Alpha equals minus 1, I'm at B. Oh, I think it's a straight line that connects the tips of A and B. That's how your logic would go. So this is less insightful than this, but has the advantage that A and B are more equal partners. Here's the important conclusion, is that when you find combinations of A and B, if you want to be on the straight line that connects A and B, your coefficients need to add up to 1. That's, an inch, that's the insight. That's what this is saying, that on a straight line, straight line is represented by linear combinations of A and B, so that the coefficients add up to one. And if we take alpha equals minus one half, which puts us here, remember this will be important for, for your homework. This is, corresponds to alpha equals minus one half then this coefficient is one half, and this coefficient is one half. So one half A plus one half B is right in the middle here. That's another important takeaway that will help you on your homework. That to find the midpoint, the mathematical expression for midpoint between two points in vector terms is A plus B over two. Makes total sense. The midpoint is the average. How much more algebraically intuitive can it get? It's wonderful, okay? But basically, what I'm trying to say, and maybe my choice of coefficients wasn't best, but if I'm looking at expression alpha A plus beta B, there is total parity now between A and B. Where alpha plus beta equals one, then I'm on the straight line connecting A and B. That's what we get from here, that as long as coefficients add up to one, you're in a straight line connecting A and B. And if both coefficients are positive, then you're actually between A and B. Just think about this, alpha equals zero here, not the alpha, but the coefficients of A and B. Right, so let me look here. If alpha is one and beta is zero, we're right here. If alpha is zero, and beta is one, we're right here. If they're both one half, we're right here. If, it's, if alpha is three quarters and beta is one quarter, we'll be right here, and so on. 
So as long as the coefficient set up to one, we're on this line. If they're both positive, then we're right between A and B. And if one is positive and one is negative, then we're to the right of one point. And if the other one is positive and the other one is negative, then we're to the left. I want you to modify this expression in, a, in one way. I mentioned before that when I asked this question, there was a lot of arbitrariness. First arbitrariness is to what point does alpha equals zero correspond? The other arbitrariness is whether we're going to the right or to the left. We could have put plus alpha or minus alpha or A minus B or B minus A. That was another arbitrary choice. But the third ar level of arbitrariness, which I would now like to remove, is how fast we're traveling along the line. And I want to travel at unit speed. In other words, what I want you to do is modify this expression. Here's what unit speed means. So that alpha corresponds to arc length. In other words, if alpha changes by one, I want you to have traveled one unit of distance. Doesn't matter whether we use inches or centimeters or we call this our unit, right? Our entire discussion has a natural concept of length. Why? Because we're talking about geometric objects like this, and these objects naturally have length. We don't have to define it. We agree that it exists. Maybe we have to agree on units. And let's agree, because we'll use this whiteboard for the duration of the course, that this is our one unit. So this vector is pi. <laughs> But we didn't think about their speed, or arc length, or anything. So how do we change this expression so that alpha corresponds to arc length? Correct. Correct. We want, basically want this guy to be the unit vector. We want it to have this length. We want this vector right here to have the unit length. And this is our unit length. We want it to be this long. And if you have a vector whose length is not one, but seven, but we want to make it unit length, what do we do? We divide it by seven. So in order to make a vector unit length, you just divide it by its length. We're allowed that concept. The way we chose our starting point, saying these are our objects, we were given length for free. That doesn't happen in linear algebra. That doesn't happen when you have coordinates. When you have coordinates, you have to say, my length is described by this expression. When you start by saying, this is my object, you get the concept of length for free, because it's natural. All right, and the way you do it is simply by dividing a vector by its length. So it becomes an ugly expression. It is. It is an ugly expression. But it, but it is a correct expression. There you go. It's an ugly expression. I won't argue with you. But it's the correct expression. Because what we have here is a vector of unit length that points along this direction along the direction of the straight line. So we will be using this a lot. So don't be shy about it. 